Hey fellas, H4006 here. It's, um, this is a part I bought a ways back on eBay for my pair ordinance 1911. Um, it's a trigger with uh, you know, adjustable trigger. It came pretty, the finish on it has this kind of finish. It's, you know, it's uh, rough and texture is real gritty. So what I'm going to do today, um, before I install it, is I'm going to polish it up with some sandpaper here. We started on this side, you can see the edges. It's coming alright. I'm going to go ahead and hit all sides of it. And also, um, here on the bow, I'm going to just take a very little amount of uh, of the, I guess it's not, it's not like a bluing. This one also has kind of a texture to it. So I'm going to take a little, just a little bit off, almost nothing at all. Just give it a couple passes. Yeah, about 30 seconds on each side. And smooth that out so it has a nice fit when we install it. So, let me get going on that and we'll be right back. As you see here, I'm just going to have this block here, sandpaper. Um, it's not terribly aggressive. But again, I'm just doing light passes with this, and what I'm doing is just getting the sides that are that have this texture to them, and just trying to get them a, a light polish. I just want a little bit of shine there, not too much. So, I'll give you an example right here. Let's get this one started, and I'm just gonna keep it flush. And nice and flush. And I'm not really applying any pressure. I'm um, just letting the sandpaper do its work on this block here. Every so often, let's give it a look. We got. Okay, starting to come alive there. Get rid of that nasty, gritty texture head. And, uh, Let's keep it going. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this to all these sides, and I'll be right back. We're done. Again, uh, took the pop. Just took the that abrasive texture it had on it off, and uh, cleaned it up. When you're doing this part, that's curved, obviously you have to kind of just put the little sucker right in there. It's kind of take your time, nice and slow. You do not want to take more than you have. Just a little. Uh, it's not an expensive trigger, so there's a little part of that metal there. It's odd, but all in all, the polish and cleaning it up feels better. Looks better too. That crappy finish on the end just wasn't cutting it. And again, we took a little bit off the side of the bow, just a little bit, just to make it smooth. That's all we wanted. Uh, whenever you're doing any trigger work, you definitely want to be careful um, especially when you're done and you put the gun all back together you want to do your function test and when you're the first time you're going to shoot the range I uh, recommend you only put one two bullets max when you're done your trigger work so make sure your gun doesn't go full auto if it does you're in big trouble um, so you don't want to put more than one round two rounds maximum um, oh so you know what's going on and the gun is safe so I'm gonna go ahead and take apart my pair ordinance. Got it right here. And we're going to remove this plastic trigger. This is actually a good trigger. Um, it's plastic. Yeah, people say it's plastic, it's crap. But the trigger pull on this is not bad. I'll tell you. Cleared it. When you pull a trigger on this one, it's crisp and a little bit of take up, but boom. It's 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 not a bad trigger. It doesn't really bother me. This one's gonna look better in there. So let's get started on that. I'll be back. I've stripped down my 1911. This is a receiver. Uh, it's a power ordinance, P13. I have 
this stainless steel, by the way, kind of like a matte finish. Um, I did previously have an aluminum receiver on here, but that had to go once I kind of messed it up when I cracked it about right here. I'm trying to install a, a uh, mainspring housing. It was kind of a one piece uh, magwell. It was a bad idea on aluminum because you don't have much give to it. And I ended up chipping that right there, which kind of left everything unsecure. So, as you you know, you live and learn, do stupid things, and I learned that that was a bad idea. So, again, I'm fitting a a trigger for this setup, but this is the original trigger that came with it. Uh, when I had it redone or the receivers redone, they kept the same trigger on there, and uh, this is a replacement trigger. They're near the same, but um, but this one is a little bit wider. Sorry, it's a little bit wider, so you're getting some resistance. For instance, when you put this in, and uh, go ahead and drop it in, and you see there's no resistance. I think just slide in, slide out. Like I'm gonna let my finger go. It's gonna pretty much fall out and it's all well let's go ahead and put this other one in and it's kind of hard to do I'm doing it blind on camera here right here as you get it you can feel the grid like some resistance there it goes in there's some resistance there and again like when you turn it upside down it's not coming out you get a little tap it'll come out so it's the sides here the width that's causing that so I'm gonna take this down a little bit small a um, little bit at a time not much try to get just narrow it a little bit I'm not gonna get it the same identical width as this piece I'm gonna take a micrometer to them and uh, a caliper and measure them and try to get as close as possible. I'm not, you know, not dead on because that could be a long time. So let me get back to that. One of the other things I'm also going to do, this is a Series 80 pistol. The, the plunger has been removed from the first person who owned this pistol. I bought it second hand. But the, the components since I bought a new receiver, it came with a Series 80 setup. These deals here. Well, this is a uh, part from Brownell, so you can get. And there's the part number there, I believe. And what this is, is this is a shim that'll replace the Series 80 safety and disable this little arm piece that isn't really working on my gun because the plunger isn't there. It goes into the firing pin. So by doing that, you get rid of that and you just have one piece and it's just going to stay flush so we'll also be putting that in a little bit later alright so I got my caliper out let's go ahead and zero it real quick alright let's take some quick measurements here right down the middle I never pinch it I just let it kind of hug and get to where it's a little bit of resistance to measure it 0.232 far in the top 0.237, get this far inside, bottom side of the trigger. 0.234, one more time, the very edge of the middle. 0.232, okay. Yeah, it's like 0.235, you know, somewhere around there. Let's zero it again. Let's test the new trigger that I'm installing. Right, right there. 0.247 middle here 0.247 the very top and 0.243 well it's kind of a difference huh? yeah, 0.244 so seems like this side here I'll just test the end here a little bit wider not too much so we got about that was a one thousandth you take off and get as close to that. That's going to be cool. 
Well, that's the goal. Get to work. Alright, so, shaved it down quite a bit. Um, I was using that uh, sandpaper, but I had to use the good old file. It's an old junk file I got laying around, man, but it did the job. Taking the file to the sides and then polishing it with the sandpaper at the end. And let's take a look at what we got here. Now it goes in. You see it fits. Still a little bit of resistance, but it's not, not compared to before. Right now, you know, you can, you can just touch it and it'll fall out. And that's pretty close to what the other one was. The other one is really loose, but that is a manufactured part too. This is an aftermarket part. So, I mean, it's there now. I mean, you want to get it out. Bam, it's coming out. So, we did get that fitted. And now let's put it back all together. Let's put it, put it back together, right? All right. All right, guys. Well, it's got done. I've installed the trigger and tested it. And also installed the shim, which is right here. What the shim does, it, where that little arm would go up to hit the plunger or firing pin, mechan firing pin mechanism, it fills that gap so there's no rattle in there with the sear, keeps the sear you know the way it's supposed to be. So um, now that's in there, I actually was fitting one of them. Um, I have two, I bought two of them. It's uh, again like I said, the Brownells part number eight seven six zero one one seven eight zero. Um, they don't have a name on it. They kind of custom Gunworks 1911 series 1870 frame filler shims drop-in precision this one was a drop-in um, I was fitting one of them but it's because I had to angle backwards on them um, it's a little different uh, but I was able to go ahead and uh, install them drop in and it fit it's just a pain in the ass with the <laughs> uh, is when you take these down and you put them up with the hold that shim in then putting all the other pins in as well as the sear and a disconnector all in one piece so that's a lot of fun so function tested it you know should I, you know, it's working right it's not firing you know, safety's on safety's up it's not firing safety's down it does fire so function test looks good I'm going to put it all back together and we'll see what kind of how it all looks all right, so here's the finished product. Triggers in. It's installed. Um, of course, that shim we put in there is also in there. And let's take a look. Tested it out. Make sure he's working right. There we go. Again, safety is on. It's working fine like it's supposed to. And. Not bad. It's a little bit of take up right there, but it's very nice. The trigger has this, these grooves are a lot more defined. Uh, you feel that um, you know, for your for your finger pad, and then it's a very crisp trigger pull. So, and we're measuring it real quick, testing it with our skill. Let's go ahead and get that going. Right down the middle, nice and slow. And we're right around four and a half pounds at time. Let's do it one more time. Testing giggles. Let's see here. Right in the center there. All right. And that time we're getting it. Did it earlier I was getting around five pounds a four and a half pound trigger which is pretty good um, that's that's where you already want this carry gun so all that's working out all right guys want to show you it's p13 did a trigger upgrade did that uh, also a shim upgrade from series 80 series 70 conversion Z for done six signing out so keep watching the videos I got more videos coming uh, definitely subscribe please 
and fight to be fight man keep your group stack brothers